Hey everyone, I just wanted to expand a little bit on uh, Jed Walters and the nature of regret. I had mentioned in my last video that uh, I was planning to go up to Seattle and take a portrait of Jed. I'm a photographer by trade, so um, I'd always been waiting for like a perfect subject to get this 28 millimeter Leica lens for my Leica M11 and I got it, you know, right, right at the end of the year. And I remember telling my wife, this would be perfect to take a photo of Jed like up in the trees, you know? And um, I, I never got to do that. And it's been on my mind and on my heart lately to think about this, that of course we all know that time is fleeting, but the unimaginable happens, you know, has happened to Jed, has happened to all of us, you know, where, where we run out of time on something. And sometimes permanently run out of time, like the option to go back and talk to Jed or do a portrait of him or have a beer with him. And um, I just wanna tell you that if you wanna do something, you should just do it now. Like just, just stop worrying, stop thinking about the consequences. Um, just kind of stop thinking about failure, right? Like, or rejection, whatever's holding you back, just stop. And um, you know, what, what made Jed so special was in the 90s era of skateboarding, everybody that we ever met who was a great skateboarder was usually a jerk. I gotta be honest with you. I mean, I worked at XYZ. I grew up in North County, San Diego, and I skated with the best of them. And yeah, there were cool ones, but Jed was a different kind of cool where he had the skills and did not need to show it off in any way, shape or form. It didn't, it didn't float his boat. And that was rare. I mean, that era of World Industries pros, a lot of them were real bungholes. Let me tell you about it. I mean, I dealt with them all at the, as a, you know, grip taping their boards at XYZ or something. And to imagine that Jed gripped boards for a while for people that he was a better skateboarder than but only saw it as like he was probably gonna do the best job gripping a board of all time. It wasn't about like, you don't know who I am. And I think we all need to adapt that kind of a strategy, you know, because look how many people have talked about Jed since he's been gone. People have come out of the woodwork, you know, like me, who knew Jed for, you know, 30 years. And we all love him. And doesn't that say a lot about, you know, someone's legacy? So my two messages for you, you know, and maybe for me, that's why I'm doing the video there's a bit of closure is that, you know, don't put off to, you know, what you can do today. Just, just do it and do your best at it and do it with a smile. And, you know, maybe just be humble and be appreciative of what we all have here. And, um, you know, hug your loved ones, you know, whoever that is, and just go on and, and try to leave a legacy. I mean, it's really too bad that Jed's gone, but I'm thinking about him every day and I can see the portrait in my mind of what I would have taken of Jed and every time I look at my 28 millimeter lens, I think, yeah, I should have went up there. You know, I'm gonna, it's gonna haunt me, but maybe now I can just live, you know, and do more today. So um, thanks for listening. If you haven't already contributed, I'll put the link below to, you know, Jed's le loved ones. You can, you know, give them, I guess all we can right now is a little bit of financial help. And that's it. And thanks for watching.